A new Metro game is on the works, Watch Dogs multiplayer has been delayed and rumours about Wolf Among Us 2 to be revealed at the Game Awards. Hello everybody, welcome to Gamer Connect and you guys are watching Top Gaming News. My name is Gavin Manners and let's just jump into this week's news. Embracer Studios, the parent company of Thuck Nordic, acquired 4A Games who made the Metro series and ever since that happened, it was quite sure that they will be working on a new Metro game. In the 10th anniversary of the release of Metro 2033, they released a video, a really cool video where they show the timeline of everything including the books and the games. In a blog post by 4A Games, they said that it's no surprise that they're working on a new game with everything that they have learned from the last 15 years and now they have set their sights even higher. They want to make this game with a complete overhaul of their engine and renderer which I believe Metro Exodus had but I guess they want to do it even more insane and go the next level. Late last year, Metro's creator and author Dmitry Glukovsky posted Metro Exodus art with TBC added on it with the caption, the Metro series will be continued working on a story. Now this clearly defines that they're working on another new story for the game. For them, single player was like the biggest thing that they wanted to work on but they have been talking that they always wanted to also work on multiplayer. With Saber's experience in online gaming, they are looking into the world of multiplayer and trying to find out if they can make this work. They do mention that they are not jumping into multiplayer because it's an ongoing trend or something but because they just want to explore that part of gaming and they believe that Metro games are perfect for that. As of right now, it's still very early to decide whether it's going to be a single player game only or it's going to be a package of single player and multiplayer or is it going to be only multiplayer game. It's very hard to say because it's very early days but at least we can be sure that they're working on a multiplayer game but do not be afraid they are still working on the single player campaign because that's the most important thing that they still believe is what Metro games are all about. Dimitri himself believes that Metro games are a single player experience rather than multiplayer but they still want to go in the multiplayer direction. Although I am not a big fan of multiplayer being added into Metro games. I mean maybe it's a post apocalyptic world, maybe it's kind of fallout but I don't want to have that multiplayer side of things into Metro. What do you think about multiplayer being added into Metro games? Is it something that you want to see? And have you guys played any Metro games? If you guys haven't, I would recommend it trying them out. It is right now available on Steam and it's a sale as well going on. This is going to be the last day so definitely check it out if you want to buy. The whole franchise is right there and it's a really really cool franchise. Ubisoft has announced that Watch Dogs multiplayer will now be delayed to early next year instead of December 3rd as planned. The news came with the patch update which had a lot of concerns over the game's bugs and technical issues. It's as if you're using cheat codes in GTA Vice City or San Andreas, you know, when you can use a cheat code and the car flies. It's something like that as a bug. They say that with this delay, they can focus on single player and then also test at the multiplayer. Of course, you don't want any bugs happening in multiplayer when it comes around. Now the devs are working hard to bring update 2.2 to fix a load of crash issues and bugs as well as adding a manual save button. Watch Dog Legion has been getting mixed reviews from all over the world with not much happening in the storyline and it's mostly been linear. I'm not a Watch Dogs fan because I've not played even the first game completely. I played a little bit but then I lost interest. It's one of those games that I never got into but I believe that there are a lot of people who love the Watch Dogs series. So I want you guys to let me know in the comments below what do you think about Watch Dogs Legions and if you haven't played it, will you be playing it? Let me know all of that in the comments. Marvel's Avengers without a doubt has been the biggest failure by Square Enix with so many players just not playing the game at all. A few months ago we also saw that there's only around 1000 people playing the game and the main reason is how the game is built with little to care about in the game. Now following the publisher's quarterly financials, it has been reported that Square Enix still hasn't earned back the developmental cost. The company has already lost around 7 billion yens between April and September. Square Enix tried their best to sell this game out. As I said, they took major advertising campaign at the time of its launch to make up for the delays in their marketing efforts that resulted from pandemic. The president of Square Enix, Matsuda, still has hopes for the game. Going into the first quarter of 2021, the first and foremost intention is to push sales for the new hero, Kate Bishop. 
If I talk about Marvel's Avengers, then the single player experience of the game is pretty fine and it's pretty good, but when it comes to the live service part of the game, that's where the game fails. Again, as I said, there's little to absolutely nothing to care about the game. The upgrade system is a bummer where you just get numbers instead of any kind of change and you're going to the same missions over and over and over again and the enemies are just hard, not different. And with all of that, I don't blame people for their drain of interest from this game and that's why they're leaving this game. We also made a video about the first impression of Marvel's Avengers beta where I also talked about how they need to change some things in the multiplayer and as of right now I don't think they can do much but let's see what can happen. Speaking of Square Enix, they announced that they want their employees to work from home permanently. Even though they announced this, that doesn't mean that offices will be empty, some work will need the employees to work on office and things may even change every single month. It sounds great that they're willing to make this change and give an accessibility, but working from home sometimes can, uh, well, cause frustrations as well. You know, just saying. Cyberpunk has pushed back the DLC until the game is released, which don't you worry, it's still 10th December, it's gonna come out on that day, don't you worry, that game is not being delayed anymore. The initial plan was to release the DLC before the game releases, but with the recent delay, they decided that the gamers should get the game first and then they will talk about the future DLCs. CD Projekt Red previously said that the DLCs will be as large as Witcher 3 and will be having both free and paid DLCs. I would have liked the free ones, but it's fine. CD Projekt Red president talked about multiplayer as well, which is going to be a standalone project and most likely will be playable after 2021. They will talk more about this in the first quarter of 2021. I am not so keen about multiplayer in Cyberpunk because I don't like every single game going to multiplayer. But of course, if it's coming, it's going to directly compete with GTA 5. So what do you think that Cyberpunk should have that GTA 5 didn't have in the GTA Online? Let me know in the comments below. With game leaks, physical copies coming out of Cyberpunk, at least we are sure that the game is coming out on 10th December. Cannot wait to play this game on my 1050Ti. I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot about my graphics card because I mean, I'm happy that I can play that in 1050Ti and I'm happy that I can play games in my 1050Ti, which is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> and since Cyberpunk is just a week away, which life path will you be choosing in your first playthrough? Let me know. Telltale Twitter account posted a tweet about discounts on the games for Black Friday and with that fans started asking about Wolfmong Us 2 appearing in the Game Awards, whose trailer was teased a while back, to which the account tweeted another tweet, quote, CM gets questioned about the news they can't answer yet, with the GIF of Telltale Batman escaping. Now this could be a sort of a confirmation that Wolf Among Us 2 is actually going to be revealed in the Game Awards, but again, you can't quite say. But if that happens, I would be the most happiest person in the world. Wolf Among Us, in my opinion, is one of the best Telltale games of all time, with such brilliant mysteries and storytelling, and with them announcing the second game a while ago, made me very much excited, so I want to see this happen. The Game Awards will be airing on 10th December, and of course, in the Game Awards, we see a lot of games winning awards. One of them is the biggest award of the night, Game of the Year. But it's not only the awards that they show off, it's also some new announcement. And that's why I believe that Wolf Among Us 2 can be one of those announcements. But I'm also excited for any other new surprises that's gonna come out in the Game Awards. Telltale Games' biggest game was The Walking Dead, which was actually really well done. And thanks to Skybound, they were able to finish the final season of the game. Have you guys played Wolf Among Us? If you haven't, definitely check this game out. This game is really good and it's definitely gonna set your mood right. The biggest meme that was created back in 2007 was whether any PC can run Crysis and it stays till now when Crytek released the Crysis Remastered as they added a graphic option called Can It Run Crysis as the highest setting that even the new hardware is not able to keep it up at 30 FPS. The main reason I believe is they wanted to make sure that no hardware is able to play this game even at 30 FPS because that's what happened all the way back then but it looks like things are gonna change. With the recent update, now at least with the appropriate hardware, one will be able to get closer to the goal with the graphics setting. Now you can run Crisis in Can It Run Crisis mode. Congratulations! Oh by the way, do you know about the very satisfying Monster Hunter movie trailer? Well it looks like Monster Hunter World Iceborne will have a character from the movie that you will be playing in a new story mode. Monster Hunter World Iceborne has added a new story in which you will play as Mila Jovovic's character from the movie. She has voiced her character, who sort of looks like her, in two limited time event quests and you will need to be a master rank to unlock it. 
The first event sets you up with the Black Diablos in the Wild Spire Waste and rewards you with the materials needed to craft an Artemis armor set, as worn in the movie. It's cool that they have added her in the game, of course they want to promote the movie as much as they can. I mean the game looks completely fine, but I don't know about the movie so we have to wait and see if it is as good as the game is, which I have very low expectations of anyway, but let's see. Well that is all we had to cover in this episode of Top Gaming News. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, if you did leave a like and you can comment down below and whatever news we just discussed in this very video. And to keep up with videos, events and tournaments and much more, subscribe to Gamer Connect. Do not miss a single thing.